This is a simulation where bots roam the field in search of prey. Prey appears in random locations for a limited time, and if no one eats it, it disappears. Bots are born, live, and die. They can die from old age or exhaustion when they are unable to find prey for an extended period. After accumulating enough energy, they can reproduce. All bots are identical except for one trait. They can emit a call of varying volume when consuming prey, attracting their neighbors. Instead of enjoying the prey alone, the bot seems to share it with others, incurring costs. It would seem that natural selection should eliminate such behavior. In natural selection, the fittest survive, those who leave more offspring. Displaying altruism decreases the likelihood of achieving that. However, sometimes altruistic behavior becomes embedded in the genome. This is exactly what we will try to model today. The video does not address the moral, conscious altruism characteristic of humans. Human altruism is a phenomenon of a higher order. The video shows altruistic behaviors in organisms devoid of thought, acting purely on instinct. In this simulation, I will attempt to recreate conditions where altruistic behavior is naturally fixed in the genome. A brief overview of the simulation setup. The world is populated by bots. A bot's size indicates the amount of energy it has accumulated. Each turn, a bot's energy decreases by one unit. In the absence of prey, bots try to maintain a distance from each other. Prey appears in small groups at random locations and eventually disappears over time. A bot can only detect prey within a short radius. When it spots prey, it is marked with a black circle. As the bot approaches the prey, it consumes it, increasing its energy. During this process, the bot emits a call, informing its neighbors to the presence of prey. The volume of the call is genetically determined. The reach of a particular bot's call can be inferred from its color. I use the following gradient. All bots that hear the call are marked with a circular indicator. They begin moving toward the sound, hoping to get some of the available prey. Each bot has a limit on how much food it can consume. Once a bot is fully satiated, it is marked with a cross. At this point, it does not respond to stimuli, ceases calling, and focuses solely on digestion. If a bot has enough energy for reproduction, if sufficient time has passed since it produced its previous offspring, and if it has already digested its last meal, the bot reproduces. These last two rules are crucial for the simulation, and we will return to them later. An offspring inherits the gene for calling from its parent, however, with a small probability, the value of this gene may change slightly. This initiates natural selection. We can only observe how the gene value changes in the population over time and under different conditions. When the simulation began, the gene value for all bots was set to zero. That means they were silent. Soon, timid screamers emerged. Their calls were weak, so nobody heard them, which had no effect. Over time, though, bots capable of calling out to their neighbors started to appear. These are the first altruists, willing to share their resources with their neighbors. It might seem like these are just random mutations that should be eliminated by natural selection. However, over time, the calling range only increased, and the number of altruists continued to grow. In biology, there are mechanisms that allow altruistic behavior to become established in the genome. One of these mechanisms is known as kin selection. Let me explain how it works. Here are three bots. They are relatives. One of them found a resource but acted selfishly and didn't call anyone. This allowed it to leave behind three offspring, while its neighboring relatives each left only one. Consequently, in the next generation, there were five carriers of this allele. 
Now consider these three other sibling bots whose gene variant compels them to share with their neighbors. When one of them finds food, it calls all its neighbors. As a result, it was able to leave only two descendants. However, each of its two neighbors, who carry the same gene variant, also left two descendants. Therefore, six carriers of this allele transitioned into the next generation. The altruist lost one potential descendant, but two others carrying the same gene variant emerged. According to Hamilton's rule, kin selection increases the frequency of genes when the genetic relatedness of the recipients to the altruist, multiplied by the benefit to the recipients, exceeds the cost to the altruist. 6 is greater than 5. Over time, representatives of the altruistic gene variant will begin to outcompete the owners of the selfish variant. For this to work, organisms must either be able to distinguish their relatives, or the environmental conditions must lead to a higher probability of being near relatives. In this simulation, the latter option is naturally realized. If you observe closely, you can see that bots with other gene variants also come running to the call, but statistically, those carrying the same variant are more frequently nearby. Under these conditions, the gene variant that compels screaming at a distance of 70 pixels gains the maximum advantage. This is the gene that creates more of its copies in the next generation. If we look at the big picture, we can see a division has occurred. At different ends of the map, there are bots with different gene variants. This results in something akin to group selection. For the egoists, the prey often goes unused. The prey disappears without waiting to be consumed. Altruists consume nearly everything, allowing their population to grow faster, gradually displacing the egoists. For a long time, nothing changed, so it was time to introduce some minor adjustments. Now, the prey will yield twice as much energy and will appear on the field roughly half as often. Under the new conditions, the average range increased to 140, and the egoists completely disappeared. It would be more practical to look at all of this from a slightly different angle. We need to descend to the level of alleles. The behavior of the bots appears altruistic because, in this case, the selection occurs not between bots but between different gene variants that compel the bot to emit a call. The variant that maximizes the quantity of itself in the next generation wins. In this context, the gene does not care about what happens to its carrier. Under the current conditions in the simulation, the most optimal value for the gene turned out to be the one that causes the bots to emit a call at a range of 140 pixels. From this perspective, we do not observe any altruism. There is a selfish competition between different gene variants, and the bots are merely pawns in this game, obediently executing the commands of their gene. No significant changes occur anymore, natural selection has reached the optimal value of the gene. It is time to triple the amount of energy obtained from the prey compared to the original. To maintain the population size at the same level, prey will appear approximately three times less frequently, and the average distance between prey patches will be greater. Under these conditions, the distance of the call increased neither swiftly nor confidently. Eventually, the average distance rose to 170. There is no point in calling louder, as bots from a distance cannot arrive in time, and the prey has already been consumed or disappeared on its own. I had three rules under which a bot could leave offspring. The first rule, there must be sufficient energy. We will keep this rule. 
The bot must provide energy to the offspring and retain enough energy for itself. The second rule, a specified interval of time must pass between acts of producing offspring. We will remove this rule. The third rule, a bot cannot reproduce on a full stomach. We will also remove this rule. The last two rules were necessary to prevent uncontrolled reproduction when a bot encountered prey. Now we have lifted this restriction. Altruism began to rapidly disappear. Now, a quieter call provides an advantage over a louder one, more selfish individuals are leaving behind more offspring, and the average value of the gene has shifted towards zero. This is easily explained. Now, the only bot that finds prey, thanks to accelerated reproduction, can consume everything by itself along with its direct descendants. Let's examine a few examples. Calling someone in such a situation incurs costs. Natural selection responded promptly to this, making such behavior dominant. Evolution takes millions of years, whereas modern science has only existed for about 200 years. Imagine that scientists discovered these bots when there were no longer any reasons to call, but the call itself had not yet disappeared. How many fascinating hypotheses this would generate. This illustrates the complexity of studying how evolution unfolds. Scientists can only observe a tiny slice of the vast span of evolutionary time. Nevertheless, we can witness kin selection and its effects in nature, even in extreme cases. Consider social insects, where the majority do not participate in reproduction and instead perform specialized tasks related to caring for reproductive individuals and their offspring. According to classical Darwinian views, this posed a problem. But descending to the level of genes clarifies everything. Once again, I emphasized that the video discussed unconscious, automatic altruism, which is genetically fixed under certain conditions. No thinking is required from the bots. Humans are more complex, although there are likely genetic predispositions. You can consciously exhibit altruism. Thank you for your likes, subscriptions, and comments. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon. That's all for today, till the next time.